If you love music, you're going to love listening bars. It's what you get when you take a small bar or cafe. You add some nice cozy lighting, uh, you add a high-end audio system, and then you hire a DJ to play some curated list of usually vinyl records. The initial idea for a place like this, believe it or not, came from Japan. In Japan, there are places called Jazz Kisa, and they grew in popularity during the 1920s and the 1930s. But I discovered one in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I enjoyed it so much that I dug into the history to figure out how these places came to be and why I found one in Florida of all places. I apologize in advance because I will probably screw up some of these Japanese words. Kisa is short for Kisoten, which in Japanese means a coffee shop or a tea drinking shop. Jazz in Jazz Kisa is just jazz as in jazz music. So a jazz kisa is a kisa tent in which people go to listen to jazz music. There are other kinds of kisa tent. For example, a manga kisa is where you would go to maybe read some manga with some like-minded people, or a mikyoku kisa or masterpiece kisa is where you would go to listen to classical music. So why were people in Japan going to these places to listen to jazz music in the 1920s? Well, I was wondering that too myself. In the 1920s and 30s, there was an explosion in Western culture in Japan. So things like coffee itself, cafes, and also jazz music were a big part of that. Outside of live music venues, there weren't really a lot of places to go to hear this new jazz music, let alone the fact that most of the artists weren't in Japan at the time. So these places, these jazz kisa, were where you would go to hear that music. They were also like a cool place to be. <laughs> you know, these places weren't open by people trying to make a lot of money or make like some kind of complicated business, they were usually owned by music enthusiasts, which is why the audio systems were always superb and the music collection was always really, really good. It's important to point out here that the term jazz was kind of used loosely to refer to music coming out of the West, specifically America. Most of the time, the person who owned the place was also the one that curated the music and sometimes was the only employee of the entire establishment. He went to a jazz kisa specifically to listen to music. It wasn't in the background like it is in most places. It was in the foreground. By the late 30s and early 40s, these jazz kisa had exploded across Japan and there were about 80 of them across the country, most of them being in Tokyo. Around 1942, there was this big thing Cold War II. As a result of that war, a bunch of these places got destroyed along with their collection of music. However, after the Japanese surrendered in World War II, the US placed a bunch of people in Japan. A lot of those people loved music, and some of them were musicians. So these jazz kisa became popular again. In fact, they became even more popular by the 70s. There was about 600 of them in Japan itself. But years later, uh, cheaper and easier access to music, advancing technology, and introduction of something called the compact disc really kind of reduced the need for people to go to places like this to hear music. Jazz kisa still exists today. And it's not nearly as popular as it used to be in the 70s, but there's a lot of them. In fact, you can go to Google and you can search um, on Japan Jazz Kisa and see that there's actually still a substantial amount of these in Japan. Some of these places are really similar to the way things were um, before, during, and after World War II. Some of the places are slightly different. For the most part, some of these places still play music from vinyl, but some of them will do live performances, and a lot of them have maybe shifted how strict they stay to either playing jazz or playing some subgenre of jazz or playing a completely separate genre of music altogether. And some of these places also now serve alcohol in addition to coffee and tea. The Jazz Kisa solidified the appreciation of jazz music in Japan. And it actually led to the development of some subgenres of jazz that were specific to Japan. Outside of Japan, the newer places that have been open would usually be called like listening bars or Japanese listening cafes or Japanese style listening bars. But make no mistake, they owe their history to the Jazz Kisa. If you love music and you love chill, cozy environments, you will love going to one of these places. You should do a search in your city to see if one of these exists. And if you find one, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. My name is Wisdom. Thank you for watching.